and we're picking up today at chapter 31 of David Walliams's Grandpa's Great Escape and Jack had just gone into Twilight Towers and we're going to see if he can finally see his grandpa. The matron of Twilight Towers stood in the doorway. The short lady was wearing her nurse's cap and was flanked by two incredibly bulky nurses who dwarfed her. One nurse had a black eye and love and hate tattooed on her knuckles. The other t had a tattoo of a spider's web on her neck and what looked like stubble on her chin. Both scowled at the boy. They were the ugliest nurses you could ever meet. Jack's eyes darted to their name ba badges. Nurse Rose and Nurse Blossom. Miss Swine was, was twirling what was at first glance looked like a baton. Holding it in one hand, she then rhythmically tapped the palm of, of her other. The effect was quite menacing. At one end of the baton, there were two metal prongs, and on the other, a button. What was this strange contraption? Well, 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 we meet again. Good afternoon, young Jack, purred Miss Swine. Good afternoon, Matron. It's lovely to see you again, he lied. Nice to meet you too, ladies, he lied again. Now, we are very busy here, looking after all the old folk at Twilight Towers. What do you want? I want to see my grandfather, replied the boy. The two nurses chuckled to themselves at the thought. Jack had no idea how what he had just said could be considered funny. I am so, so sorry, but it's not possible right now, replied Miss Swine. Well, well, why? The boy asked nervously. Your grandfather is having a little snooze. My old folk here like to have a good snooze. You wouldn't want to interrupt that now, would you? That would be rather selfish of you, don't you think? Well, I'm sure if Grandpa knew I was here, he would want to see me. I'm his only grandchild. Strange. He hasn't mentioned you once since he got here. Perhaps he's forgotten all about you. If this was designed to wound the boy, it has succeeded. Please! Jack was pleading now. I want to see my grandfather. I need to know he's all right. For the last time, your grandfather is snoozing. Matron was losing her patience. He's just had his pills. His pills? What do you mean his pills? Jack wasn't aware that his grandfather needed any pills. In fact, the old man had always refused to take medicine of any kind, saying he was as fit as a fiddle. I personally prescribed some pills to help him sleep, but it's still early. He doesn't need to go to... He, he doesn't need to you to disturb him now. He doesn't need to go to sleep now. It's not his bedtime. Let me see him. The boy lunged forward and tried to get inside. Immediately, he was repelled backwards by Nurse Rose. Her big hairy hand caught his face and threw it back like a ball. The boy stumbled onto the gravel and landed on his bottom. The nurses had a good laugh at this. Jack scrambled to his feet. You can't get away with this. I demand to see my grandfather this instant. The well-being of my old folk is paramount to us all at Twilight Towers, announced Miss Swine. Her two little eyes glinted in the low winter sun. So, we keep them on a strict timetable. As you can see, the visiting hours are listed right there. She pointed to a sign on the wall with her baton. It read, Twilight Towers, opening hour, Sunday afternoon, 3pm to 3.15pm. Latecomers will not be admitted. All other times, we are strictly closed to all visitors. That's not even an hour, protested the boy. Boo hoo hoo, replied Miss Swine, before offering a sinister smile. Now, if you don't mind, I have my old folk to think of. I can't have a nasty, selfish little child ruin everything for them. Now can I, nurses? Yes, matron, they replied in unison. Please escort this young man off the premises. Yes, matron. With that, the two burly nurses stepped forward. Together, Nurse Rose and Nurse Blossom picked Jack up by his arms. Without breaking a sweat, they carried him down the gravel path towards the front gates. Jack tried to kick his legs, but the nurses were so big and strong, there was no way he could take them on. The matron watched as the boy was carried off. 
She smiled to herself and gave Jack a little wave. She called after him. Missing you already. Do come back and see us soon. Chapter 32. Weeping Willow. Nurse Rose and Nurse Blossom dumped the boy right outside the gates like he was a bag of rubbish. Jack's trike was, trike was tossed after him and it landed with a clatter on the ground. Then the metal gates whirred shut. Clunk. From inside, the two nurses watched as the boy picked himself up, got on his trike and pedalled off down the road. By this time, the sky was shot with red as, as the sun set. Night was about to fall. As twilight towers were set on the edge of the moors, street lamps were few and far between. Soon it was dark. Real country dark. After pedalling for quite a while, Jack looked over his shoulder. Twilight's towers were still a long way off. And just as he could no longer see the nurses, they could no longer see him. Jack was a boy that was not going to take no for an answer when it came to seeing his grandfather. What's more, it was clear that Miss Swine and her gang of nurses were not to be trusted. As he reached an area of woodland, he jumped off his trike before hiding it under a bush, covering it with branches, just as Grandpa had told him the RAF would hide spitfires on the ground from em enemy aircraft above. Slowly, Jack made his way on foot back to the sinister old folks' home. He avoided the road and instead made his way across the moors that led to Twilight Towers. With only the moon illuminating his path, finally Jack reached the perimeter wall. It was a great deal taller than he was, and barbed wire snaked across it at the top. Climbing it was going to be impossible, so Jack had to think fast. There was a weeping willow tree growing next to the wall, with two branches just draping over into the grounds of Twilight Towers. There was one problem. The willow tree was in full view of both observation towers. From the top of these, huge searchlights swept up and down the grounds. This was going to be dangerous. Jack was frightened. He had never even dared to do anything like this before. Slowly but surely, Jack began to climb the willow tree. That it was winter and the branches were bare of leaves made it easier. After he had shimmied up the trunk, he edged his way along a branch, but disaster struck as it buckled under his weight and distributed a flock of ravens that had been perched there. Squawk! 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 The birds made an awful racket as they took to the air in fright. The beam of searchlight circled in the darkness before stopping on the tree. As fast as he could, Jack edged his body around to the far side of the trunk to avoid detection. He pressed himself up against it and stayed there as still as a statue. The lights froze on the wi willow tree for some time before eventually moving off. But the nurses atop of the observation towers would be suspicious now. One false move from the boy and he would be caught. And who knew what Miss Swine would do to him then? After counting to ten in his head, Jack edged him himself back around the other side of the tree. On his hands and knees now, the boy crawled along the branch that hung over the vast grounds of the nursing home. But not being used to climbing trees, Jack made a miscalculation. He had spent too long painting model aeroplanes in his bedroom and was not one for the great outdoors. So Jack crawled right to the end of the branch, thinking he could let his weight act as a lever. But the branch was not strong enough to hold him and it snapped. Snap. And we pick up again tomorrow at chapter 33, Sliver Like a Snake and see what happens to Jack as the branch breaks.